So this is a V Can C, and you make a optical fingerprint sensor. And this is it right here. It's your product. So do you sell this sensor? Yes, we manufacture and design to sell it. So what's special about your sensor? Well, this sensor is unique because it's the first optical fingerprint sensor that's suitable for embedded devices. Usually optical fingerprint sensors are used for high security applications like border crossings. But they're so large, they don't fit into embedded devices like phones or tablets. So right now in the iPhones and the Huawei Mate, for example, and some other, what are they using? What's different between yours and this? So this technology is called capacitance, and it's the same kind of technology that's been used for computers for many years. Capaci Se is ca capacitance? Yes, capacitive sensors. So like a capacitive touchscreen, similar? Yes, it's sending a little bit of electricity into your finger, and it's measuring the time it takes to receive that information back and building a fingerprint. But, but your sensor is much more precise, like a 2000 PPI. What is a, an iPhone? Oh, and a uh, tablet. Like so, this. generally, capacitive sensors can exceed 500 ppi. So, this is four times better. Uh, correct. And uh, so, what's the disadvantage? Also, is it easier to fake this one? or? Uh, well, at the resolution of the sensors, it is not difficult to bypass it using a fake fingerprint. So, this is like a print of your fingerprint or yeah, something? This is the print of the same finger right here. So, so I you just pushed it with your finger once? Well, well, yeah, it, I can just store it. put it here and it opens it up just like it would with my finger. All right. So uh, this could go also in, in smartphones and tablets. Where can it go? Uh, of course. It's uh, meant primarily for embedded devices like tablets, certainly smartphones, computers. But other things like cars, industrial machines can also accept this kind of fingerprint scanner. So 2,000 PPI, uh, more details. You have third level, what does that mean? Third level feature detection? Yeah, third level means that uh, we see things like sweat pores. Uh, we see things like the shape and the thickness and thinness of the ridge. When you talk about fingerprint, the first level is the pattern. Is it a whirl, a loop, or an arch? The second level is uh, minutia, where the fingerprint lines start and stop and split. But in mobile devices, the sensors are so small it's hard to capture enough of those second level or minutia details. And that's why we can, with relative ease, bypass the security with a big fingerprint. And so, uh, are you already in some products? Or is it, what are you showing over right here? What is this? So this is our development board that we provide to customers evaluating our technology, looking to embed it in their system. How it works is simply placing the finger on. And then, as you can see on the screen, we're capturing these third level details. So even though it's a small area sensor, there's so much information, we can make very accurate identifications. Even if someone were to uh, try and use a fake fingerprint, even an amputated finger or a person that's not living is detected by this kind of system. Really? So all these stuff from the movies are uh, not possible anymore? Well, uh, I won't say not possible, but we're certainly making it more difficult. So how much more difficult? Just only four times more difficult or like exponentially more secure? Well, I don't know how to quantify that, but I can say the ability to penetrate our system with a fake fingerprint is quite different. It's not easy to make a mold and have all the small features and have that transferred to some sort of material like a rubber compound and then have our sensor accept it. Would it make sense to, like in some movies, they also detect uh, temperature, sweat, some other stuff, heartbeats, or doesn't make sense? Oh, of course. So as an optical sensor, we're also able to do things like measure O2, different things inside the blood. When you go to the doctor, they measure your blood with optical sensors. At this time, though, we're focused on providing our fingerprint recognition. In the future, as our customer requirements grow, we certainly can add this incredible technology. So you say it's incredible, it's uh, ready. Since when are you showing this? Well, we were sort of working undercover uh, almost for a year. We uh, filed our patents, we made our prototypes, and then we raised our first uh, round of capital. And uh, in January of this year, we launched ourselves at CES. And at that time, many famous companies learned about us, and we were able to share our technology with them, get their feedback, and move toward commercial uh, relationships. Where are you based? Well, we have offices in Beijing and New York City. All right, New York City, and, uh, and so soon, we'll have this in, uh, in, in right here. Yeah, another interesting advantage of our system is that it can go underneath the glass of the device. So you don't need to cut a hole. 
It means that if your finger is wet or dry, it has no material difference on the outcome of the identification. And it also allows for some really cool new industrial designs. Nice. So optical, fingerprint, security, uh, it's really cool. Uh, how about the price? Oh, it sounds like it could be more expensive. No, it's actually a very simple design. It's a CMOS imager, a camera imager, and yeah. it sits inside of a device yeah. so that uh, the price will be equal or even less than the existing capacitance sensors. Really? That so OEMs not more price? Buying. No, not more. And just much more so precision so everybody should use it? Well, there's also the advantage that a manufacturer doesn't have the cost of cutting a hole in the screen, having to use things like glass to cover the sensor. So we think that there can be an overall economy. Nice. So that's awesome. And uh, all these other kinds of sensors that you were talking about, it's maybe generation two, when you want to have temperature, humidity, all that stuff, it gets compatible. Uh, I would call that generation three. I would say the uh, generation one embedded device sensors are the capacitance type of sensors. We represent, in my opinion, the first of the generation two. The capacitance technology has been around for 10 years. We're very new, bringing the optical fingerprint sensing. And then generation three may be just like you said, where you combine other modalities like O2 sensing or thermal sensing to even do more checks on liveness. And, uh, and can you also do like swiping to the next picture, uh, that kind of uh, gesture sensing? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, at this time, we haven't really put much thought into it, but our sensor reacts so fast to the touch. It can be used to replace a mechanical button. So for example, you touch the sensor to go home, but if you leave your fingerprint there, it'll capture that image and authenticate it for some purpose, like maybe a transaction or opening an app. Yeah, 